I'm Jen Kilborn. And I'm Melissa Klug. And you're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. We want to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry and to give you the confidence you need to grow the business that you want. With strategies designed specifically for professional organizers, we hope to inspire you wherever you are on your journey of entrepreneurship. We're so happy you're here with us. Now let's get started. Hey, Pro Organizers, it's Melissa, and I hope that you are having an absolutely fabulous week wherever and whenever you are listening to me. This is the second time that this has happened on this podcast, and it is that I have a guest with my same name. So it will be a two Melissa podcast again today. My guest is Melissa Gugney, and she is a professional organizer in the San Francisco Bay Area. But she and her husband have many different entrepreneurial ventures. She has had a lot of entrepreneurial experience, and I wanted to talk to her about something that's kind of a buzzword, and I think that it is sometimes misused. So we wanted to really talk about the concept of boundaries and what that means for people who own their own businesses, for organizers specifically, because we have a lot of things in our business that sometimes you need to put some boundaries around. And I just think it was a really important conversation to have. I learned a lot from it. And this is something that I will tell you, honestly, I personally struggle with as an entrepreneur and just as a person, as a mom, as all of the different things that I am. And I hope that you will get something out of this conversation. Before we start talking with Melissa, I want to remind you we do have a free workshop. It is called the Pro Organizers Profit Plan. It is available at poroadmap.com. And we are opening enrollment in our Inspired Organizer program. I would absolutely love to have you be a part of our community. If you would like more information, please send me an email, hello at proorganizerstudio.com. I will be happy to get in touch with you and give you some details, but we would love to have you join our community of organizers across the world and getting daily coaching, encouragement, cheerleading, all of the good things, and a bunch of education on how to create a sustainable organizing business, which that is one of the things Melissa and I are talking about in this podcast. When I say sustainable organizing business, I mean that I want you to create a business that supports you financially, if that's important to you, or physically, emotionally, all of the things. And in order to do that, we sometimes have to set these boundaries around clients, around our work, around work hours, all sorts of things. This is a conversation I think it's important for entrepreneurs, and I hope you enjoy it. So here we go with my friend, Melissa Gugney. This is not the first time that I've had another Melissa on the podcast, but it's so funny. We were just talking about this before we hit record. I did not grow up with any Melissas. Like There was one other Melissa that I grew up with, and now this is my second Melissa on the podcast. So hello. Welcome. Hello. And see, I grew up with so many Melissas. So really? So big year. Okay. In Michigan. Yeah. You're just not quite East enough. Interesting. So I guess, I guess the, the, I was, I grew up in Ohio. So actually like maybe it just didn't transfer that far South. I don't know, but interesting. Welcome. I'm happy to have you. Can you give us just a quick overview of like your organizing life? Tell us about your business and and we'll get into, you have a lot of things that you do. So yes. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy to be here. I am Melissa and the name of my business is Melissa Gugney Organizing and I am an organizer in the San Francisco Bay Area and I travel around a little bit beyond that too. I've been in business for, it's always hard to answer that question as I say, since I was a child, uh, but kind of officially in the last five years and made it officially official in the last two. I mostly am helping a lot of busy families organize their lives and beautify and do all the things we organizers do. But because of my experience with having small businesses for so long, I also do quite a bit of small business organizing, retail and restaurant restructuring, kind of a I'm a generalist, I suppose you would say. Or I'm more jack of all trades or a yes. woman, or there are a lot of words that we can use to describe <laughs> you. <laughs> yes. One of the things I love about you is you are not just an organizer. You do a lot of other things entrepreneurially. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Yes, I definitely do. So I've been an entrepreneur for pretty much my entire adult life. My husband and I started our first business almost 20 years ago, which was a cocktail catering company in Ooh. the Bay Area. Yeah. I'm closer to pro organizing than anything else I've done, actually. Okay. We were in high-end homes doing, you know, fancy cocktail bars. Then we opened a wine and cheese shop 
in North Beach in San Francisco, followed by a wine bar. And both of those businesses are still open. We had a couple of other businesses in the meanwhile. And we now have a vacation rental up in the wine country. And then I've got my pro-organizing business. I have a kid. It, there's a lot going on around here. A lot. <laughs> yeah, a, lot a lot. A <laughs> lot. <laughs> but organizing businesses is what I do. I realized that through being a pro organizer, that was sort of a natural shift because I have the organizational skills to be able to keep all of these things going. And an entrepreneur through and through, I've pretty much only worked for myself along with my husband, who is a true entrepreneur. And that that's just what I know. How did you guys decide, like, did you kind of decide this as you were, you know, in your romantic relationship, like, hey, we want to do this? Or like, how did that evolve? I'm just interested in, in how that happens. Yeah, that's such a good question. We actually met backpacking in Australia. Oh I mean, that was early 20s. Well, it gets even better. We had met three years before in Prague in a hostel. Oh, my gosh. And then we ran into each other again in a very small place in Australia and then traveled around Australia in an old station wagon. And so we were used to being scrappy and getting by and working where we needed to to keep things going. And I suppose that was the roots for it. We figured out that we could make things happen. <laughs> so, you were like one of the earliest people to adopt like that whole van life thing, right? I know, like, like you were like the leading edge. We were doing that way before it was cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm always interested. So I, I have a friend who is, you know, in entrepreneur. So my husband and I do very different things. And I'm always interested. I have a friend who's, who's doing some things with a partner. And is it fun to work with your spouse? Or do you have moments where you're like, wow, I've had a lot of you today? Or is it like a little bit of both? It is a lot of both. And I will say we have learned over the years. It It is very tricky. And when people say, oh, that sounds like it's so fun. It's like, well, sort of well, sometimes. <laughs> In many ways, it's wonderful to be partners with your spouse because, you know, we have to sort it out at the end of the day. And we also don't have to be splitting the profits amongst other people. It stays Great in the night. Okay. So that's very you. nice. But, you know, boundaries. We've had to learn. We've learned the hard way. We've been at this now for almost 20 years. So in the beginning, we didn't have a lot of boundaries between what he and I did. Then as things kept growing, and then we had our son, who is nine now, and we really had to start divvying it all up. Now it runs quite well for us working together, but I don't know that I would just recommend that to anybody. <laughs> yeah, it has to be the right people, right? It definitely does. <laughs> well, I was out with friends last night, and I was talking about, you know, my husband, because of the pandemic, he became a stay-at-home, he became a home office person. And even though we do things completely separately, there are still times where I'm like, wow, you're in my, you're in my space. <laughs> like, why, why are you still here? <laughs> so then like, yes. with what you do, you have to do it all the time. Yes. And the struggle is real. I get that. And we also live in San Francisco in a small apartment where we're really on top of each other. So yeah. it's a lot of AirPods and like, I'm working. I'm working. <laughs> Well, so one of the things that you're talking about is is boundaries. And so how do you put boundaries around not just your other businesses, but like just as an organizer, like tell me a little bit about, you know, what boundaries mean to you? Yeah, well, boundaries at this point mean everything to me. I feel like that's how I've been able to sustain being an entrepreneur for all of this time, because I have experienced so many dips and burnouts it's easy to do, you know, it, that when you're so immersed in it all the time, I was always, you, you know, I, a do-it-yourselfer. I can learn how to do PR and advertising, marketing. It's very, very exhausting. And I was very much a bootstraps business too. I'm, I'm learning, finally, finally learning to have boundaries even around that, that it's okay to hire people, hire experts, but that's like advanced stuff for me. So having boundaries is all over the place. It's it's something that I get to challenge myself with all the time that, you know, in, in a job, as you know, what is my job? Where am I staying in my lane? Because I know in the beginning with organizing, it was like, oh, I can do that. I'm great with a hammer. I can do that. Like, no, I got to know what my skills are and stick with them. And then in the broader sense, just with the business, it's very easy to just keep working, right? You work all the time. And that's, and I don't want to say that's just an entrepreneurial thing. I get even when you're working for someone else and working from home, the, it gets blurred. 
But I had to start looking at, because I get to make my own hours, how do I want to show up in the world? If I am burning myself out, am I a grumpy mom? Am I showing up to jobs frazzled? Sometimes this is unavoidable. I don't mean to say that I've got this all locked in or anyone should, but it's more of a chance to be constantly looking at where am I today? Is this actually working for me? Is this sustainable? Only because, as I said, I have gone through this before. And that initial catering company, which we ran for quite a while, I really couldn't take it anymore. I didn't even want to go to a wedding for a while. It was like, I can't even be around parties. This is just too much. Because it was, I thought that that was my identity. And, And maybe that is the ultimate business boundary of, oh, I represent my brand. My business is Melissa Gugney Organizing. Obviously, I represent my brand, but that's not everything. (laughs) That can't be everything that I'm doing day in, day out. So you've said a few super important things, which is, especially when you're starting a business, you know, it does take a lot of time and energy and it occupies a lot of your brain. And I feel like, at least for me, it's hard to shut off my brain sometimes. And I have to say, nope, it's okay for me to just sit on the couch and watch a TV show. I don't also have to have my laptop working on whatever. And the other thing too is you happen to be in a lot of different businesses that they do not have nine to five Monday through Friday boundaries either. And organizing is, I mean, I I organize on weekends with clients, not as much as I used to, but at first I would be like, yep, what time? 10 o'clock at night? Great. I'll be there. (laughs) So, you know, those types of things, like sometimes our job is not defined in a normal job time frame either. Having those boundaries and really deciding what works for you, I think is really super important. Yeah, it sure is. Because on top of the burnout, I think what I see is, for instance, you're saying working weekends. When I was starting out organizing, sure, I'll work a weekend. I really was so excited to be working and this is great. And it was only recently that I thought, you know, I'm charging time and a half now to work a weekend thought, oh, this one client really wants it. And it was like, all right, well, let's think about this. My weekends are pretty special to me. Yeah. Am I going to resent doing this? Because that's what I also see is the importance of boundaries. Resentments, which we want to avoid in life. I feel like that's kind of the worst thing, causes burnout. And I know that I have had these internal resentments towards a client and being like, oh, they want me to work a weekend. Well, I'm the one that said yes. A hundred percent. That's not their fault. It's like, yes. you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. They didn't at me and bring me to their house. I said yes, and I drove there, and I showed up. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, these things can creep up. So it's sure. like, all right, so would it be worth it if I was being charged time and a half? Sometimes, yeah. And other times, maybe it wouldn't be worth it. I was being paid a ton of money, and I'm going to say no. But that's for me to decide. (laughs) Again, I just want to emphasize, it really has taken me a lot of time to sink into what that all means. For somebody starting out, this is how you learn. It's okay, you know? And then you start to, oh God, I am resenting this client. What's going on here? Oh, right, you know, I'm I'm at their beck and call and I'm answering texts at 11 o'clock at night and nobody expects you to answer. And I've noticed that by having that boundary, that I just, and, I, and I'm like this, my friends know I don't text them back after eight o'clock. So that's just how it is. You're a set, you're kind of teaching people how to treat you, right? Yeah. So yeah, and <laughs> I love, I love the way you phrase that as you are teaching people how to treat you or you're teaching people what the rules are. And what I found is early in my organizing journey, I said yes to anything. And I, By the way, I advise people say yes to things because that I think that's an important way for you to learn. Like, I like this. I don't like this. I, I like saying yes to things. But you have said something super important. When you start to resent that yes, you have got to reevaluate. And so I used to work seven days a week. And then one day I go, I don't want to work on Sundays. And I was worried that people would be upset. And then I'm like, no, exactly like you said, I get to make the rules. So I just tell people, sorry. I remember I met with an organizer super early. I mean, I had been organizing for three and a half minutes. And I remember her saying that she refused to ever work on a weekend or an evening. Like if a client wanted to work with her, they had to take a day off of work. And I remember just quietly thinking to myself, boy, I think that's a terrible idea. You're not flexible. You're not caring about your clients. 
two years into my business, I'm like, I, I understand now. <laughs> I understand yeah. why she did that. And so you may have to, it's trial and error, but you do not, nothing's ever written in stone. You can change every policy that you have. You can change, you can change from week to week, whether you want to work on a weekend or not. It's just no yeah. rules. And I love that that's something I hear you say a lot in your podcast. I think that's so important. I took a psychology class once and I remember it saying that's something humans like is to have people feel like they're consistent, right? We like consistency. So I feel like that's ingrained somewhere of, oh, well, I work with one hoarder. That means I work with hoarders. Now I'm going to be working with hoarders always. Or I do, you know, no. And it, it is okay. You always get to change your mind. And that took me forever to figure that out. We all change our minds. I've never had anyone when I've said, oh, yeah, right. I did do that last year. That's right. I did work Saturdays, but I'm not doing that anymore. I'd be like, oh, sure. I would do the same thing, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's something that I talked about a little bit in the podcast that I did with Cabri episodes 152 and 153. We talked about sometimes we have this impression that a client is going to get frustrated with us if we do X, Y, Z. And we don't have any data for that. We just assume mm -hmm. or we decide for them that they're going to be annoyed at us about whatever. And we were saying like almost none of these times does that client actually get annoyed. So if you used to work Saturdays and then you say, you know what, my life has changed. I really think it's important to have family time. And I want you to also have family time on Saturday. I don't work Saturdays anymore. If someone is really upset about that, maybe they're not for you. Absolutely. And I really enjoyed that part of your discussion too. That stuck with me with that Cabri said of like, nobody's ever given me a hard time about that. Right. Like, that's so true. I feel like for me too, that is a mindset change that I had of assuming good intentions. Yeah. Right. I think it's very easy to enter into these things of, oh, I'm the one causing the problem. Yes. No, you know not necessarily. <laughs> I think about that old, like a childhood phrase, when you point a finger, you have three fingers pointed back at you. I think about that all the time. Cause like, and I want to go back. I don't think I really touched on it enough that I wanted to, but when you were talking about resentments that build up and I'm the one that said yes to this, when I find myself feeling some of those feelings, I do the, I have three fingers pointed back at me because I am saying yeah, I'll do X, Y, Z, even though I know that I don't want to. And that is a growth thing for me. But that's really, really hard, especially if I'm a people pleaser. That has been a really hard thing for me to be like, there are ways to be a people pleaser that don't make me lose all the time. Because I was finding that I was always on the losing end. Absolutely. And that's so pervasive in our culture. I think in our industry being very female dominated, we're in a helping industry, that type of people pleasers very attracted to this industry. So that's why we need to be extra careful about that. I think about how many times, you know, I, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to say no, but I can't really say no. How can I find and I, the, the middle ground, right? Well, what about just saying no? Which brings me to that book that I mentioned. Yeah, by yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. With no, it's kind of an old book. It's written over 20 years ago, but when I read it, maybe close to 20 years ago, it changed how I looked at everything in my business. And what's funny is that I'd never gone back and read it again until maybe six months ago. It was like, wow, I forgot how much this influenced me. And it really is about having a mission, having a mission statement in your mind which could be, I want to organize people's homes and make their lives better. It can't be about making money because that's what comes. This is the mission statement for the work you do. And about that being the reason why you do things in your business. You write it down, you look at that, where then when somebody calls and says, I really want you to do this, but I don't have that kind of money, would you consider doing it for half the price? And again, you're starting out, you have your own set of rules. I get it. Or maybe it's a really exciting project. Great. But when I look at that and I think, is this actually furthering my mission to help people organize their homes and make their lives better? Well, I don't think so because I'm getting paid half. Does that mean I get to show up and do half as good a job? Do I get to care half as much or show up an hour late? Nope. I got to show up like everyone else. And being paid appropriately means that I am putting out my best work. 
Yep. That's what I've decided for me. But that's me. That's for all of us to decide. Business is around making money. That doesn't mean that that has to be your focus, but that's kind of what my guiding truth is. If I want to do some, let's say, pro bono organizing work, I also have to make sure that I am making enough money to be able to support my family so that I can continue. It's yes. about, I have to make what I need to in my business in order to continue to support some other things that I might want to be doing. So it's not selfish. It's actually sustaining. It is making sure that you have longevity. Absolutely. Well, and that's where I think when I am using my boundaries appropriately there and my tank is full, so to speak, I feel resourced because, you know, everything's kind of in line and people know what my expectations are and I know what their expectations are. Then that's when I have the resources in order to say, sure, I can do that pro bono job and do it freely. Not do it like with the last little bit of energy I have and, oh, this better mean that I get some publicity for this and now I didn't get it and now I'm... No, I give it freely. It's something that I, it's important to me. And if something cool comes from it, that's just icing on the cake. But I'm okay to just be with that. I will also say that in my experience, and this, this, you know, my experience is just my experience. Your mileage may vary, but I have had a lot of people who have come to me and have asked for discounts or tried to get things from me. And they are not people who are actually in need either. And so that's the nicest way I'm going to say it. <laughs> I have some people yeah, I agree. Who, who really, really try to get a lot of free things from me, a lot of free services. And they are people that are perfectly capable of affording what I do. And that's actually a boundary that I have set. There's one person in particular in my organizing history that does this in spades. And I finally have just found the courage to say, sorry, that does not work for me. And that was a very freeing thing. Again, as a people pleaser, saying no is difficult for me. What I have found is it actually is a very freeing thing to be able to say, I'm really sorry, that doesn't work for me. Yeah. And some people are more forward and just say, nope. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I heard a phrase once that no is a complete sentence. It's just no in a period. It is a complete sentence. I'm not comfortable with that. I hope someone else can be because I endeavor to be that person someday, but it 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 really does make me feel good to be like, sorry, that's just not going to hit for me. But yeah, and good for you. That's a big deal. And I know when it that started to become easier for me, I really did feel a lot of freedom because even just that energy of rumbling this conversation in my head, right? Of like, oh, I'm just going to ask it again. What am I going to say? Oh, what well, what's the compromise? Then it's nice to just say, no, <laughs> you know, that's not going to work for me. And let's move on and work with people who do understand and yeah. let's say respect my time and what I charge for it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and again, I don't mean this whole podcast is not going to be about resenting clients, right? But just going back no, to I get it. I've talked about that a couple of times. And I will tell you this, this there's one client that I'm thinking of. And and you know, we never know anyone's actual financial situation just because someone lives in a big house doesn't mean they have a lot of money, right? I I understand that. But I will tell you, I that I reached a point the, the point I, I knew that I had to do something differently was I'm standing in a five thousand dollar a month apartment. And she's trying to say like, well, can I get a couple free hours because I did X, Y, Z. She tra tried to trade me services for something that I didn't care about. And I was yeah. like, I was really, really like, wow, this, this actually frustrates me that I'm standing in this exceedingly expensive apartment and you're, you know, like really being difficult about my services, which I've just provided to you. So I don't know. It's just that you've got to setting those boundaries, I think is crazy important. Absolutely. And, and I like that you're talking about that too, because that's where I make the boundary and it's put on myself, right? Yeah. Because I know what you're talking about. I had a client that was like that too. And when my mind started to fill up with how expensive is this house? Yeah. You know, you're saying you have no money. You could sell it for millions, like the, da, 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 in my head, none of my business, right? But what is my business is I don't like being treated like that. Yes. You know, that doesn't feel good. I don't know that that would feel good, no matter even if I knew somebody really had very little money, you yeah. know, and we would negotiate that differently. But it just has to be what my feeling is on it and taking that power out of 
out there since I can't control that. And you're right. We don't know what's really going on ever. No, we absolutely do not. Then it becomes a gut feeling of, I do want to help this person, or I feel like I'm being taken advantage of. And those are very different things. And by the way, it's a continuum. I have had clients that I've said yes and yes and yes to. And then I have a point where I go, I feel like perhaps at this point, we've crossed that line into taking advantage of, and then I need to take a step back. So it, but this is a learning process. It took me a long time. Oh, to yeah. Learn this. Absolutely. It is. It's a lifelong practice and it's always changing as we're always changing. Again, when I'm feeling good and my kid's not sick, I'm like, you know, <laughs> everything's coming up, Melissa. I can take on a lot more than when other times in my life that has absolutely nothing to do with go what's going on in my clients, where it's like, oh, okay, you know what? This is too much of a project. This is too emotional of a project for me to take on right now. Yeah. And that's okay. And I think that's the other thing about boundaries. I used to feel, and I struggle with this still, but I, I mean, I, I joke, I can be very serious about things sometimes. And you would have thought I was like a heart surgeon back yeah. when I was running a, a catering company, right? right? Be like, I'm so important. Like, I must do this. I must yep. do this exactly how people are asking me to do it. That I can say that internal monologue, I guess, or dialogue, whatever <laughs> we want to call that in my head of going, I don't know if this is right for me. Like, I don't know if I really have the skills for this. Like, how do I, how do I post this? Well, what if I'm just honest with people yeah. and say, you know what, this isn't my area of expertise. Yes. You know, I'm just a humble organizer. I do the best I can. <laughs> I do not know how to repair a car or whatever they're asking you to do. <laughs> people ask you to do weird things. They do. Um, yeah. I think that this all goes back to, though, this is another thing that Cabri and I talked about a little bit was fear. I think sometimes we go, if I say no to this, or if I frustrate this client or whatever, I will never organize with anyone again. Or we have this catastrophic thinking about, if I say no here, then I'm never going to get an opportunity ever again. And what mm -hmm. I have found is when I set those boundaries, when I say this isn't going to work, whatever, that is not my experience. It actually sometimes makes things a lot better for me and opens up opportunities. Well, and I think too, when I, and I set a boundary, people think I'm a straight shooter sometimes yeah. and they appreciate that. And the people who don't like that style probably won't hire me. And you know what? That's totally fine. Like that That's is okay. Fine. Yeah. Those aren't your people. And I think exactly. that- there are times in a business because we are running a business. It can be stressful. It can be, you know, we, we, we are like, oh my gosh, I really need some clients, whatever. And we just have to remind ourselves that we are not meant to serve everybody. There are yes. people that aren't our people and that is okay. It is okay. And that is also really hard because I think that's where my people pleasing can come in of like, what do you need? You need someone serious, I'm very serious. You need someone like, I'm so funny, like whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, I feel like that's kind of in my mantra is like, be Melissa, just yeah. be Melissa because people are going to love you. People are not going to love you. It's okay. And as they say, what, 2% of people will love you no matter what. 2% Two people, two percent of people will hate you no matter what. And 96% of people don't care about you. Yeah. And I love that because it's like, you know, <laughs> Just well, and, be me. <laughs> and being you, that's something that I absolutely preach on nonstop of whatever you are, just be that person. Because when you try to be something that you aren't, like I would have a very hard time being a crazy serious person. I like to laugh. I like to make people laugh. I like to have fun when I'm organizing. I have maybe a weird sense of humor for some people. That may not fit with everyone. Cool. I will find you an organizer that fits your personality. But if I try to fake it, I'm not going to bring my best work to you. I just think, and whether that's expressing yourself on your website or your social media or, it, you know, when you're networking, be yourself and that is going to attract the people that you need to attract. Faking it is never going to bring anyone in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and I can say for myself, I have to check it myself a lot. You know, I work in the Bay Area. I work for lots of very fancy people with fancy jobs and fancy degrees. And I would kind of get in this thing of like, oh my gosh, these people are so smart. Like be smart. Yeah. Be right. Smart. Yes. Where it's like, I, I have I, to talk about I, the, I, the Atlantic <laughs> article I read on the way here. No, you don't. <laughs> and you how often does that happen? And they're like, what are you talking about? First of all. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, I'm, I am very smart as an organizer. I'm smart at the things that I'm smart at. 
And again, this is so basic. I feel like most people understand this. But for me, it really was, oh gosh, like how do I fit in here? I don't have to. It's okay. I'm, you know, this is the job that I'm doing. And that feels really good, you know, because then I can come in feeling very confident about what I'm there to do. I have a kind of a standard joke that I make. If I'm talking to a friend about like, maybe they're having a medical issue, I'll joke and I'll be like, well, you know, I am a medical doctor. Just kidding. I help people make their underwear drawers prettier. And like, that's kind of my standard joke, right? And I had a friend one time that called me out on it. And she's like, you're really diminishing what you do. You don't just organize people's underwear drawer. You know, you don't just make their underwear pretty. You do so much more than that. And she lectured me about my own joke. And oh, it was love that. Pretty- I did too, actually, because I really was just joking. I know that I do more than that, but every once in a while, I'm not joking, right? (laughs) My brother has a PhD and he works with professional athletes and all this. And I'm like, I'm just a humble organizer. And I'm like, no, I do important things too. It's just different than what other people do. And I know that I have changed people's lives and that's enough for me. But I, I do think that you can get some of that, some of those feelings of inadequacy. Yeah, definitely. I I mean, and that's very human. I don't know who doesn't feel like that sometimes. But it also made me think of what a fun industry that we're in, because there are so many different ways to be an organizer and to be a successful organizer. Yeah. Right. Just thinking about I might not be the right fit. I know that there's organizers who are more, it's a nicer way to put it, but kind of drill sergeant like, yeah, we're getting rid of this, this. And, you know, I've had people be like, I want you to challenge me on this. It's like, that's not really my thing. You know, like I can do it to an extent, but again, boundaries, right? Like I'm not taking responsibility for that, but that's just who I am. There are other people that would be better for that. There's those of us who are really great at design. There's those of us who are life coaches. That's a very emotional end to it. It's, I think that is so much fun. And then I can wear slightly different hats depending on where I am. And that variety is very fun for me. I think that makes this a great business for me personally. I, I feel that exact same way. And I love, like I said earlier, I say yes to a lot of things and I love doing different things. I've picked paint colors for clients. I have helped clients pick furniture. That doesn't have to be your thing though. If you are really not gifted at that, cool, don't do it. There are other things that you can find, but yes, there are so many different things that you can do adjacent to organizing that can really fill your cup. But I know organizers too, that all they do are pantries. They only do kitchens or will only do a certain thing. And that is totally fine. That would not work for me because I like the variety, but I want people to do what works for their brain to make them happy and to energize them to go into the next day. Yeah. And I hear you. I, I love being able to say yes to lots of different things. However, and I'm in the process of figuring it out right now, I also get to see, okay, what were the jobs that were really invigorating for me and which jobs was I like, oh, and I know that that uh, job was that I was getting too far into design and I love design. I think I'm known for that styling. I love it. But yeah, getting into picking out couches for people, I was like, I don't have an interior decorating background, right? right? Like, I don't want them to get this and be like, why did you recommend this, Melissa? Like, yeah. I did like, you know, I like mid-century modern. I guess you needed something else, right? So I've had to now look into partnering with a decorator just because yeah. it's like that that's my boundary. Like I can tell you what I think and maybe that's fine. Maybe we're driving and that works. But if you really want to talk to someone that could do plans, it's great. Let's get you to somebody else. And having those resources, when you are an organizer, you are a resource manager. So you need to know like where your abilities are of, I'm happy to hang a picture, but I'm not going to hang a $10,000 piece of art. I'm going to find someone that is expert in that. I'm not going to hang a TV for you, right? Like, And having those resources of saying, have an interior designer that I really trust, or I have three interior designers, depending on what your design style is. Or I have a handyman or I have a plumber or whatever, not trying to take everything on if it is truly outside your area of expertise. Yes, absolutely. Which, you know, back to kind of what we were talking about before, I had a hard time with a lot of that thinking, clearly I'm not a plumber, but should I know design? I remember coming home and being like, I should take an online design course. Like, how fast can I learn this? It was like, 
what are you talking about? Like, it's okay. Yeah. Just be an organizer. <laughs> I remember there was there was someone, this was a while ago, but someone came into the IO group and she was like, I, I need to learn how to design. And it was just like, well, no, you don't have to. If you want to, that's great. But if that's not an innate thing to you, I happen to love it and I enjoy it. But if it's not innate to you, it might not be something even that you can learn. I'm not going to be capable of learning like how to be an electrician. It, that yes. has sailed for me, right? Like <laughs> you don't have to learn something just because you have this idea that a client is expecting it of you. I find that clients respect you when you say, that's not my area of expertise. Let me get you to someone for whom it is rather that's than trying crazy. to do something that you're not actually really that good at because they're going to be able to figure that out pretty quickly too. Well, that's it. Doesn't that just kind of negate all the great work? And I have a funny story about that. Early in my organizing career, I'd been working in a home for quite a while. So we knew each other really well. And I was doing a little bit of handyman type stuff. And I'm handy. So it was like, that's fine. Handy person type stuff. And I'm a really good house painter. And there were holes everywhere from the previous tenant. And I was like, oh, that's fine. I can fill them. Do you have the paint? And I asked many times, Are you sure this is the right paint? Yes, it's the right paint. Okay, there were holes through the entire house. I filled them all, sanded them did the touch-ups. Great. It was the right paint color. It was the wrong sheen. Sheen. Yeah. This day, their entire house has a different sheen. And it was like, I did my due diligence, but that was such, and they were okay with it. But I still go back in their house and I'm like, oh dear God, it's yeah. good. Oh, so I have to repaint really the entire house. Never again. You know, yeah. that's a stand in my lane. It's one thing for me to do that in my own home, but I'm not a painter. It's yeah. okay. This is slightly different, but last week, I, by the way, if you think that I do everything perfectly, I don't because uh, this is a story about last week, but usually my husband, we jokingly call him Mr. Home by 11, will go with me to some places like, cause I was installing a, a closet, just a small closet, but an alpha system for this client and long story short, Tim wasn't available. And I really was just like, I really just wanted to give these people their closet. They had been waiting a while. And I was like, I really want to go do this. I'm like, I'm doing it by myself. And this closet is extremely narrow. I literally is up on a ladder inside a closet. And when I got done doing it, which I can do it right. But it was just, it wasn't going great. And I start to hang the shelves and I'm like, they don't look level and I'd had a level and whatever. And I, but it was just, this closet was so awkward and it was just, you know, that the phrase half a bubble off center, it was just the teensiest bit off center. Like I almost cried, honestly, because I'm like, I'm going to have to redo this whole thing. And I'm like, why did I not just wait and say, I really need my handyman husband to come with me to help me with this. Instead, I was like, nope, I'm plowing through and I'm doing it. So it's just, it's one of those things, by the way, clients totally fine, but still it's not an ideal thing. Just chill out and you don't have to do everything for everyone all the time. You're so right. And chill out is like such a good mantra too, because as an organizer, right, we're, we're doers and I love giving the finished piece. I love the reveal, right? So I've been in that position where it's like, oh, it'll be fine. I'm going to make this work. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. But then when I look at working with an architect or a designer or so many other things, they got there waiting for months. months. We had worked on, on our house. It was like nothing. There was no big reveal. Like the reveal yes. took eight months. So it's like, I yeah. don't want to be that. But I also can say, it's all right. And lo and behold, the client's like, oh, well, it's fine. I wasn't expecting it to be done today. Like, really? Right. Oh, great. Really? Great. I just put a bunch of pressure on myself for no good reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you say that. This house that I'm in, they have had a giant renovation. I first met them almost a year ago at this point. Their house has been in transition for almost an entire year mm -hmm. and it's still not done. I went, I went to their downstairs. I'm like, well, there's a concrete floor. That's better than the last time I was here. Like they are waiting for months. Yeah. So why did I feel pressure to put in a closet that I really needed help with? It was dumb. <laughs> if only organizers ran the world though, right? Like <laughs> for we sure. really do get things done. <laughs> I do. I've actually said that to this client. Like we've reached the point where I was just like, this just seems like it's taking like a really long time. And I just think about like, I feel like I could manage this project a little bit better, but what do I know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I know. Hey, yeah. that's, it's another future offshoot. 